if there's one thing I know is luxury YouTube is not going anywhere. Hi all and welcome back to my channel. Recently on YouTube there has been a resurgence of talking about quiet luxury and minimalism. Now every time this topic comes up on YouTube people are very intrigued and interested to know what are the best ways to express this. Also, the luxury community has gone through quite a shift. I've noticed recently that a lot of people are talking about downsizing their collections and making their luxury a little bit more meaningful and less impulsive. Of course, there are many factors today that have really influenced this. Many people are deciding to go for a bit more of what they call a quiet luxury, which is a luxury that doesn't speak logos or volumes with colors or patterns and nothing that can be too associated with the brand. A lot of people do refer quiet luxury as something that if you know, you know. So if you know a designer or brand's a typical aesthetic, then that can can be considered quiet luxury and what the elite or the rich will aspire to get because when we talk about luxury as opposed to designer a lot of people refer to designer as something that is a little bit more specific to a name brand and very recognizable when you talk international designers and something that you can immediately recognize. When people talk about luxury, it's more about the experience and how that makes you feel. So a lot of spaces that have luxury that are for the more upper class wealthy are places that are not really known by trends or social media and places that have really refined and made an impact on quality and care. Now, globally, most countries have undergone a 20% increase on everything and this has really changed the economy. So it has made it a lot harder for the middle class to attain certain luxury items and designer items for that matter. So what is happening is a bit of a shift so obviously these brands still want to grab capital, but they're having to change what they do and how they are creating their pieces to make it accessible and also to make the trends wanted. Brands are picking up on this and they're making a lot of their luxury a lot more minimalistic and a lot more like refined basics. Brands that I would consider quiet luxury would be The Row is a very popular one at the moment that is getting a lot of recognition for their quiet luxury. So people who do buy The Row, obviously it is quite an expensive brand. There's no logos or anything really that makes The Row look like it is something like luxurious unless you know the brand and their cuts and their silhouettes then it's a lot more obvious to you but to the everyday person walking down the street they will not recognize a cut from the, the row. The middle class is finding it really difficult now to spend their excess money on luxury and designer items. Since 2020 a lot has changed in the economy. We've had a lot of companies lay off their workers, their core workers or cutting costs within the company to sort of adjust and this has taken a huge impact on a lot of people. As we have had this 20% price increase, we also haven't had a lot of pay rises happening within jobs. People are asking for them, but they're not always getting them. And it's a lot difficult to adjust to this inflation and still justify purchasing your luxury purchases. Many people are justifying not wearing these luxury brands or designer brands because a lot of the designs are tacky and outdated and too flashy but I think it really does stem a little bit deeper than that. A lot of people if they can't access something they will say that they don't need it. They will just try and justify as a way for them to cope so they don't feel like they're missing out and this is just a normal thing that people do in life. If someone is perhaps jealous of something they will try and retreat and act like you know they don't need to be a part of this even though deep down they may really aspire to 
have something like this. But if it is too unattainable, then it can just be ruled out completely. And this makes a lot of sense for people to be able to cope like this. There has been a rise in the old money aesthetic. A lot of people are saying that the old money aesthetic is what real wealth looks like. And this has been something that has been talked about for years and years and years. Even as long as I can remember, people have always said that designer brands are tacky and logos are horrible. And if you want to look like you've got money, then you should dress a little bit more classy and elegant, sophisticated, less is more. All this sort of thing is definitely a debate on whether or not you look like you have money or not. My personal opinions on this is you can only dress how you feel and how you want to feel. If you want to feel expensive and rich and portray yourself like that, then that is fantastic. That is an opportunity that you can do with fashion. And whether that be in designer brands by letting people know that, yes, you spent a couple of thousand on this brand and you can see the logo. And if you want to celebrate your money that way, then that is definitely definitely something that can make someone feel great. If someone wants to look wealthy, but let everybody know that, but not have to tell them, then that could be a very refined uh, aesthetic that someone needs to tailor and practice on how they want that to look. This is not always going to translate as old money and like you were wealthy. This could translate into you dressing like a grandma or you not having any style or dressing boring. It really depends on the perception of the other person. So the main important thing when it comes to buying and expressing yourself is to make sure that you're dressing for yourself because at the end of the day, that's what you've got to live with. Say if you were to dress in an old money aesthetic where you were wearing, you know, blazers and shirts and tailored pants and a low profile heel and this is how you were dressing on a, on a daily basis to make yourself look like you are of an upper class or if you were just trying to express yourself in this certain way that will attract other people who are of a wealthier class, well, it goes in a way that if you're willing to do something like that, you can absolutely nail it. But if you're not in those spaces where other wealthy people are, such as in a private member clubs or on certain vacational spots where it is very hard to stay there if you are not wealthy and you don't have connections, then it will only get you so far. So I don't understand when people preach what is a wealthy aesthetic because if you're trying to have that aesthetic but you don't have the access to these wealthy privileges, then it may not get you anywhere and it may not make you feel any better. You may be better just spending your money on what you really want to spend it on and looking like you've spent all that money. It really does depend on how you're going to feel at the end of the day, if this is going to make you feel better or if it's going to make you feel worse <laughs> about your current situation. Lately, it has been a lot more difficult to justify these luxury purchases because of the very vast drastic price increases. We've seen it with Chanel and Dior and many of these other designers are also following the lead of increasing their pricing. And I find that people are taking a step back and they want to just relax and sort of see how the economy is going to go. And that's why I think that this luxury YouTube ending is just a complete phase. A lot of the luxury influencers who have been on YouTube for many years have gone through so many cycles of buying things, repetitive hauls and expressing their love for luxury for many years that it has now become a cycle. You know, when they say like a seven year cycle, that it gets to a point that there's less that you have to talk about. There's less that you want to share. You have different aspirations because the excitement isn't there. But the fact of the matter is, is we always have marketing departments for all of these luxury brands. And their core job to do is to get people who may not be excited about luxury 
into luxury, bring them into that space to make them more excited and to buy from them. And there will always be a cycle of people who have never experienced luxury before and are just getting into designer brands, whether that be they've heard about Louis Vuitton before, but they don't know too much about it and they've never been into a designer store. All of these clientels are very valid to luxury brands still because it's a doorway opening to a new experience of feeling special and valued and a lot of these designer brands do this very well and it becomes an addictive process where you just want to keep on collecting experiencing that same experience so even though some people are a little bit tired of it and they may be shifting into a different field there's still those people who have never experienced anything like this before and they are going to open up their arms and their wallets to these luxury houses no matter what the price increases were. I myself haven't been a very long lover of luxury. In fact, when I was growing up, I used to think that luxury was a little bit overrated. In Australia, sometimes when you see people with luxury, it's not very common. So you do associate it with maybe being a fake item or just you don't really notice it as much. Being in London, that is very different. Uh, one of the first things I noticed being here is that a lot of people would play with luxury in a way that they would underdress their luxury and it looks very accessible. And I think many other places in the world also practice styling luxury like this. And this will be a constant thing that will always attribute to consumerism. Obviously now a lot of people are deciding to recycle clothing and, you you know, experiment back with fast fashion because of the current circumstances. However, when things do level out finally, luxury fashion will become more accessible again and people will start to get excited about designer logos and brands because it always goes through a trend and it always comes back around. I personally have collected luxury brands over the last three years and I've really enjoyed what I've found and I've gotten so much love and no regrets on any of the purchases really that I've made. In fact, I've always just felt like I've been elevating my style and just my excitement for luxury has just grown. Of course, there is a time when you do have to sit back and really address whether or not these are investment pieces or whether or not they are actually going to serve the purpose of making you happy. But that's something that, you know, everyone has to go through. It was only a few months ago when the YSL tote bag came out and it was this big oversized bag. People were talking about luxury being a little bit more wearable and oversized bags are now going to be the, the epitome of what is a designer luxury bag to collect as mini bags were supposed to be going out of fashion and the, the fact that they are not practical uh, people are going to start to push away from that and have more bigger bags well this is true in a sense because people are wanting to have that one bag that they can use for everything and less over consumption However, this is only a very short thing that's sort of come around as these bigger bags have been a bit more popular. The YSL tote with the big logo on the front was quite popular for a little while. When that one came out, other bags started to follow as well. They have a Chanel trendy bag, which is also just like something, something like a sack that just says Chanel at the front. But you know, it's the things that sort of go around in cycles. I am confident that in a few years, everyone is going to really embrace luxury YouTube again and it's going to be really something bright and exciting and we're going to go for a cycle of influencers that are going to be really passionate about it and love to share that same fellow love for luxury. But the main thing is to just enjoy yourself and if you don't like luxury that is fine if you need to just switch off that's absolutely fine. If you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up. I do a lot of unboxings on this channel and occasionally talk about what's happening within the luxury space and I'd love to have you stick around for more.